watch some horses. We just finished watching Equestrian. One of the most stressful Olympic events I think you can go to. It was so much more stressful than I was expecting, but I feel like I didn't breathe the entire time. Everyone's silent. It's almost like golf in that way. And then they just do their jump, and then when they mess up, everyone goes, oh. I know. And they're perfect, everyone just erupts. It honestly was really cool. And Equestrian's at first side too, so the venue itself is so beautiful. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Paris during the Olympics. I'm here for the week, obviously why the Olympics are happening, but today we don't have any events. And so I just wanted to bring you along with me to show you guys what it's like being in the city during this week. And I'll just be kind of exploring and going on a little solo adventure by myself today. I have a few places that I wanna go visit, but other than that, I'm just kinda gonna explore and see where the day takes me. So I have been to Paris three times and the very first time I was here was in 2018 and it was only for the weekend, it was a pretty quick trip but Notre Dame was fully still intact. Part of Notre Dame burned down in April 2019. And so if you hear the noise and the construction in the background, my view right now is looking at Notre Dame and they're trying to rebuild it. I'm going to Shakespeare and Company right now and I think what's so cool about being in Paris, even though there are certain places that are very trendy and that everybody goes to, like for example Shakespeare and Company, I think what's so fascinating about Paris and Europe in general is that all of these places also have so much history behind it. And so Shakespeare and Company opened back in 1951 I want to say and ever since there it's been such an iconic meeting place for actors and writers to meet up there. So it just opened so let's go head over to Shakespeare and Company. books and so now I have two tote bags that are a little heavy so heading back to the hotel room right now so I can drop that off and give you guys a little haul because I honestly could have shopped for hours there and gotten so many books but my luggage would have been 800 pounds I tried to restrain myself but I definitely will be going back but for now I got three books and I'll show you guys what I got and then we'll head back into town Okay, slight detour. We are meeting Alex's mom and dad for breakfast right now because they are at a little cafe. So doing that and then going back to the hotel room to drop off my stuff. Okay, I'm back in the room because I had to do a little outfit change because the shirt I was wearing was super uncomfortable. So I ended up getting some things and I wanted to show you, but I got two postcards for my sister. I got a Sylvia Plath book for one of my good friends, Ariel, and I just thought this was a really beautiful cover. Ariel is a collection of Sylvia Plath's most famous poems that she's written throughout her years. I just thought this would be a really good gift for my friend and so I got this for her. Okay, so the next two books I got for myself. I've been really interested in getting a little bit more into essays and more critical thinking books. When you're in school, your teachers ask you to read so many different books that you're not necessarily interested in in the moment. That kind of hindered my love for reading because I felt like it was more about quantity and just getting through the books and getting through the quarter or semester. And so once I got back into reading, I feel like I gravitated more towards very easy reading fiction. Now I want to get into 
a little bit more of essays and something with a little bit more depth, I guess you could call it. The title of this book is Any Person is the Only Self. I think what's cool about essays, I think you can read a chapter, go do something else, think about what the chapter is truly trying to portray. And when you're ready to read the next chapter, you can go on to the next. So I'm really excited to get into this. I don't even know if I've ever read an essay post school. So I think this is the first one that I picked up for myself. Lastly, I've seen this book a lot and unfortunately they didn't have the first two books. So this is the third. The woman at Shakespeare and Company mentioned that each book mostly stands alone. Although obviously if you read it from the first book, you get a little bit more character development. But this book is about conversations that the main character has with people that she has met throughout her travels, especially being at the Olympics when there's so many different people and cultures all in one city at the moment. I thought this book would be very fitting to read while in Paris and just for the remainder of my trip. And obviously I had to get this tote bag. I have this already in red, but it kind of got ruined already. But yeah, this was kind of my haul at Shakespeare and Company. And I'm excited to go shop and explore a little bit. Let's go meander around Paris. I just left the jewelry shop and it was just me and the employee working there and she was telling me that business has actually been pretty slow because the tourists that are here are primarily going to the Olympics. They're not necessarily coming to go shopping and explore the actual city itself. And so she and I were just talking for about 40 minutes. She was super sweet and she helped me pick out the jewelry. I got these silver necklaces and this bracelet as well as these thumb rings and I wanted to do a little mix and match of colors but I also have no silver jewelry so this is the very first time kind of branching out of my element and I love it. I really feel like Paris has done such a good job about hosting the Olympics because public transportation has been so easy to get around. There are posters everywhere and so many people also volunteered as personal guides in order to guide you wherever you need to be at the train stations or even just throughout the city. And so I just feel like everything is very well organized. just wandering around right now. I was kind of in the chaos of the Louvre. So I'm going a little bit more north. I'm going to the second and ninth district. I think I'm just gonna go in a couple more shops and park myself down to go read out a lunch spot. Okay, there were so many people in Cezanne, so I did not find anything, and I'm also getting pretty hungry and tired of walking. So I'm going to pop myself at a cafe and do a little reading there. just finished up lunch right now and I know not everybody is like this but I never eat by myself I don't go to movie theaters by myself so I was kind of proud of myself for having my lunch I brought my book with me to give me some company I feel like there's something so empowering about having a meal without anybody and you can enjoy your own company without needing the company of other people because I feel like that's actually a really hard thing to do especially when going to restaurants is a very social thing so you might feel a little bit like an outsider in those circumstances, but I feel like it's a very great way to gain independence and just confidence in being with yourself.
Okay, so I just walked into another jewelry store and I bought this little bracelet. And I don't know what it is, but there's so many jewelry stores here that honestly are pretty reasonably priced. This is gonna be my jewelry trip. I don't own a lot of jewelry, so that's gonna be my mission of what to get. I'm heading back to the hotel room to freshen up before we head to dinner, but I feel like it was a pretty successful shopping day. It's so interesting seeing the difference of being out in Paris this morning versus right now because there's so many people out especially in the first announcement which is where the Louvre is there's like club Paris going on so everybody is out and about and partying the city's just packed and it's just so funny because this morning when I went to go get coffee it was just locals going to work I just got back to the hotel room and honestly, I'm pretty tired. I've been out since 9 a.m. this morning and it's about 7 p.m. right now and we have dinner that we're going to in an hour, but I think it was a really successful day. I was kind of wandering by myself for the majority of the day, but I met up with Alex's family for breakfast as well as some shopping in the afternoon. And Alec went to go see weightlifting this afternoon at the Olympics, so I'm very curious to see how that went. And as much as I love my morning routine, I need to become a night person this week because everybody is out in the streets and having dinner super late and there's just such a different vibe of being in Paris at night. have the Arc de Triomphe right over there. It is a very beautiful city and a helicopter right there. What do you think about the city so far? Pretty good. Easy to get around. The city's beautiful though. Yeah, the city's beautiful. There's police everywhere, which I'm sure you can hear the helicopter. It might be for marathon swimming though. Oh, it's for marathon swimming? Maybe. Yeah. The marathon swimming is in the Seine River, which I don't think ever really technically got cleared to be clean enough to swim in, but, but good for giving, them. They're just giving swimmers E. coli left and right. Yeah, but I'm sure those swimmers are killing it right now. It's very beautiful. I need to be hitting this up. The amount of police that are here, it's insane. There's like groups of policemen everywhere. There's so much security in the city. I think marathon swimming is free and we're very close to the end point so we're gonna go try to catch the very ending of marathon swimming right now. They even have a camera floating right there. We found them! There they are! Okay, so we just finished our run and we meant to do a nice little like 20, 30 minute run. Ended up being almost seven miles. So my feet are hurting a little bit, but we're starting off the day strong. We're getting coffee right now. We're gonna go journal and read at a little cafe around the corner from our hotel. And then we have a couple events later. So it's gonna be a good day and it's beautiful out. Alec had a 
a brilliant idea to go to different wine bars and do a little bar crawl all in character. And so he crafted a persona for every single person on this trip at the moment. So there are six of us. And we just bought costumes for this. And this is his new persona. How y'all doing? Please explain who you are. My name is Lucas Habenstein. I'm from Liechtenstein and I'm an archer. I won the uh, 2008 Beijing Silver, and you know I'm ready to go drink some wine. <laughs> so we do this on shopping, and now, now we're not even supposed to be in character yet, but Alec is strutting down such a busy street in, in fully this costume. I got a little scarf for my British character who is a gymnast from Great Britain who won the 2016 Rio Olympics. Alec knows I really dislike acting in general and also speaking with an accent so he gave me the easiest thing that I could possibly try to attempt. <laughs> I wish I was really good at this stuff but I'm not. We're sending it right now. I mean he's sending it for sure. I am morbidly embarrassed that this is how we're walking around the streets of Paris right now. But I feel like I'm actually kind of killing this. This is kind of cute. I think it's fire. <laughs> <laughs> we literally just randomly found a thrift shop that had a bunch of random stuff. So this is what we got. Getting into character. Yep. Good morning, today is Friday. We only have two more days here in Paris and Alec and I are going to go see water polo and track and field today. And when you buy the tickets for the Olympics, you actually don't know who's playing for most of the games because it's all dependent on who wins throughout the Olympics. And we're actually seeing two matches for water polo. We're seeing Italy and Spain, and then the next match is going to be the US versus Serbia. And for those of you who don't know, I used to play water polo in high school. It was kind of a crazy story of how I got into it. Basically, I never played water polo and accidentally signed up for it and ended up loving it. So I used to play kind of back in the day and I just love the sports. So water polo is actually something that I'm really excited to go see. And then track and field, the finals tonight are gonna be so exciting. So today is gonna be full of events and I'm really excited for it. Also, we went to beach volleyball last night in front of the Eiffel Tower, which was absolutely stunning. The venue could not have been any better. We just made it to beach volleyball and it's right next to the Eiffel Tower and it kind of feels like Coachella. There are games here and everybody is out on the field and having a good time and it's just so beautiful. And there's the stadium right there. And we were on the side where we overlooked the beach volleyball court and then behind it was the Eiffel Tower. But yeah, they had a really fun fan zone area. We were able to watch two different games. One women's, one men's. So that was really, really fun. And everything, I stand by this, everything has been so organized throughout the entire city of Paris. Like everything has been very seamless. The apps have been great to just get around and figure out the transportation. And even though there are a lot of people at the venue, it doesn't feel very crowded. Like everybody knows where they're going and how to exit and enter into places. So it's been awesome. Yeah, it makes me a little bit nervous for the Los Angeles Olympics in four years. Paris is doing a really great job. We just made it to the water polo stadium. I am morbidly carsick from our Uber over here, but we're making it okay. just finished at water polo and sadly the US lost but the Serbian men look so terrifying and I honestly feel like the US did a pretty good job keeping up but it was exciting for me just to watch them play I haven't watched a water polo game in a very long time the game was honestly pretty close for a long time and then towards the end I think the US kind of lost their steam dance session for about an hour and now we're heading into the stadium. We have the craziest seats.
I just did a little bit of packing since we leave tomorrow, sadly. Our room was kind of a disaster, so I just packed up. We've collected about five new tote bags. Our stack is right here. And I've also collected a lot more books than I came here with. We finished writing all of the postcards that we wanted to send to family and friends and we bought stamps here in France so I'm going to go drop those off right now. I don't know how or where to do that. I'm meeting up with the girls for lunch at around 1 p.m. so I have a couple hours to drop off my postcards, maybe stop into some last minute shops for maybe some last minute gifts. Okay, I'm really happy I got those postcards out. The people there helped me get everything situated because we made a couple mistakes, probably because we were about six ginger spritzes in, but we are all good and they're being sent out. Okay, so I just got back from the post office and I was walking around the city and something that's super cool that not a lot of people recognize or notice is that there's this one street artist who creates art through ceramic tiles and ceramic mosaics. The street artist's name is Invader and so they call these mosaic titles different invasions throughout the city. It's all kind of scattered throughout the city and usually you can find them above street signs. And they actually have an app now. I don't think it was designed by the actual artist himself who I believe remains anonymous, but someone created an app that's almost like a geotag. So you can take a photo of the art and you can identify whether it's real or fake. And if it's real, you get points for it. But if it's fake, it will let you know that it's not an authentic piece. And there are over a thousand in Paris specifically, but they've kind of expanded throughout different major cities throughout the world. And it's just kind of a fun thing to notice when you're walking around the streets. So I did say that I was going to head out and explore town before lunch. I get really bad FOMO when I'm in Europe or I'm traveling where I want to sleep as little as I can and just go explore every single second of the day and go do things and, you know, experience the culture of wherever I am. But I got so tired and just resting sounded very, very nice, especially since we're going to be out for the rest of the night. And I walked outside. I literally flipped a U-turn and went right back to the hotel and just laid in bed, watched TikToks and... Now I'm actually going to go to the lobby because we're meeting in a few minutes to go get lunch. It just feels so good. <sighs> So we just left the soccer match and US beat Brazil, which was an amazing game and so exciting to watch. And all of those girls were so talented, so good. And at the very end, when we were walking out of the stadium, we got asked to do an interview. And I don't necessarily love to do interviews. You know, I used to take public speaking, but I still get really nervous. But it was honestly pretty cool to get interviewed like that. So yeah, I've never been interviewed like that for a sporting event and definitely not for the Olympics. So it was a super cool experience.